Transformers King Grimlock is a five-issue limited comic series where Grimlock, the powerful and fierce Dinobot leader, finds himself transported to a fantasy world called Mononia. In this realm of swords, magic, and mythical creatures, Grimlock must battle against evil forces that seek to dominate the land as he contends with barbarian warlords, sorcerers, and dragons. Grimlock is seen not just as a warrior, but as a potential hero and king. Relentless, stubborn, and uncontrollable, Grimlock and his Dinobots have always clashed with Optimus Prime's more compassionate approach to warfare. As they join forces to defend Harmonix from rogue mechanibals, their opposing ideologies are made crystal clear. Prime plans to honor Cybertron's agreement with Mastermouth and send the surviving mechanibals to Nebulon Station for sentencing, but Grimlock has other ideas. He believes in making a statement and does so by brutally splitting the aliens in two with his sword. Prime asserts that mercy is a strength, but before their debate can continue, the ground beneath them suddenly pulses with a strange green light. Prime suspects it's just an automated security field, but Grimlock senses something off. With a swift move, he shoves Prime aside moments before the light flares up and completely engulfs him. In an alien jungle, a cockatrice flies through the dense undergrowth until it's crushed under Grimlock's massive fist as he materializes. Disoriented, the Dinobot leader struggles to understand where he is and what just happened. Attempts to contact Prime yield nothing, leaving him uncertain but determined. Suddenly, a pack of enormous feline-like beasts charge him. Despite their size and numbers, their attacks barely scratch his metal exterior. Thinking quickly, Grimlock shifts into his dinosaur mode, swatting them aside with his tail before incinerating the rest with a fiery blast. As Grimlock reverts to his robot mode, a voice congratulates him on his victory over the Leodon pack. He turns to see a group of unfamiliar humanoids who greet him as their savior. Their leader, Arnak, introduces himself as the Elder of Valorift and the one who summoned Grimlock to Mononia. He explains that long ago, Cybertronians led by the Golden One liberated Mononia, but time flows differently here. The Golden One's power has since twisted him into a tyrant. The rebels, unable to defeat him alone, cast a spell to summon the Cybertronian hero who once saved them, Optimus Prime. Grimlock bristles at the mention of Prime and snarls that if they want him, they're out of luck. Despite the disdain from his daughter Arco, Arnak pleads with Grimlock, explaining that their spell exhausted their power, and the only way Grimlock can return home is by helping them defeat the Golden One. Meanwhile, in a radiant citadel, the Golden One uses his enchanted abilities to spy on Grimlock. Amused that the rebels summoned the wrong Cybertronian, he tells his servant Clata that while Optimus might have united them, Grimlock is a reckless brute whose arrogance will only sow more division. Arco voices her frustration, fearing an imminent attack from the Golden One. She urges her father that if their savior won't fight, they'll have to do it themselves. Arnak reveals that the Golden One punishes worshippers of the Anti-Sun by transforming into a dragon and burning everything in his path. Though Grimlock could be their only hope, he refuses, declaring that strength comes from fighting their own battles. Arnak insists that helping them is the only way Grimlock can return home. But the Dinobot leader stubbornly stomps off into the wilderness, as one of Arnak's allies remarks that Optimus would never abandon them. Grimlock fires back that he's not Optimus, and never will be. If it means being stranded in Mononia forever, so be it. Arco, undeterred, follows him. She recognizes that Grimlock despises weakness, and so does she. As Grimlock battles a trio of monstrous Cyclops wielding Autobot-marked weapons, Arco tracks his path of destruction, determined that if she can't persuade Grimlock to help, she'll find a way to force him. As Grimlock forces his way through Mononia's dense forests, he's ambushed by a group of armed Cyclops wielding blades marked with the Autobot insignia. Although these monsters serve the Golden One, Soltron's chosen champion, they're no match for the Dinobot commander. Their weapons bounce harmlessly off Grimlock's metal exterior. When he transforms into his dinosaur form, the Cyclops are stunned. Only the Golden One is known to shapeshift. But as Grimlock incinerates the creatures with white-hot flames, living vines suddenly entangle him and drag him underground into the maw of a colossal subterranean beast. Grimlock attempts to free himself, but more vines bind him tighter. 
Just as the creature's jagged teeth close in, the barbarian girl Arco leaps in, slicing through the tendrils with her sword. Grimlock, though reluctant to admit he needed help, listens as Arco reveals that they're trapped inside a massive ridgeworm, and the only way out is to fight their way through its rocky intestines while battling gutworms. As they slash through the creature's innards, Grimlock questions Arco about Soltron, she explains that Soltron is the god worshipped by the Golden One, who bears a face like the emblem on Grimlock's chest. This confuses the Dinobot, as he explains to Arco he worships the Necrobot, and all Dinobots fight in hopes that their conquests will outpace the Necrobot's tally when they die. Arco retorts that Grimlock would have died without her help, leading to a tense standoff when Grimlock unsheathes his energy sword. Despite the odds, Arco stands her ground, refusing to beg for his respect, even offering to duel him to save her world. Instead, Grimlock walks away, refusing to crush someone who can't match his strength. Arco then proposes a deal. If Grimlock teaches her how to gain enough strength to defeat the Golden One, she'll teach him about Mononia. After a moment's contemplation, Grimlock accepts the offer. Not long after, the first lesson comes when they stumble upon a fishing village under attack. Arco points out that the fishing village of Angloria has nothing of value, even for the likes of monsters like the Golden One. Grimlock challenges her reluctance to intervene, and Arco points out that it's the same justification he used when her father asked him for help. But Grimlock's internal heads-up display reveals that whatever is attacking the town isn't human, but wooden constructs mindless soldiers of the Red Wizard. Arco warns that these beings serve a powerful foe, but Grimlock insists real strength isn't found in crushing the weak. Together, they charge into battle. Arco rides Grimlock's dinosaur form as they obliterate the Woodbots. Meanwhile, one of the surviving Cyclops reports to the Golden One of their recent failure to defeat Grimlock. The arrogant sorcerer has no patience for their excuses and promptly disintegrates him with a single blast of arcane power. As the other Cyclops cower, Clata points out that Grimlock is still alive and might yet decide to fight for the people of Mononia. Arrogant as ever, the Golden One remains confident that Grimlock fights for no one but himself. But if Grimlock attacks the Red Wizard out of disgust for his actions, then the Golden One will have removed a potential rival for the throne, subtly turning the Dinobot into an unwitting pawn. After the battle, Grimlock grows concerned over the Woodbot's existence, and Arco reveals that they are mindless creations of the Red Wizard, who kills the living to create his undead army. Grimlock explains that all Cybertronians are born with sparks, an animating life force, from which they derive life, sentience, and free will. The Woodbots did not choose to be born, or carry out such heinous acts and Grimlock considers this a crime worse than anything the Golden One could possibly concoct. Although the Anglorians are throwing a feast in their honor, Grimlock announces his intent to confront the Red Wizard and make him pay. Meanwhile, from his tower, the Golden One gloats. While an Autobot would immediately seek to dismantle his cult, Grimlock's fury blinds him. As Arco questions why Grimlock refuses to fight for Mononia, but readily seeks a dangerous battle, Frustrated, Arco storms off, doubting what Grimlock can truly teach her about strength, if he's so consumed by personal vengeance. Deep within the ominous rotlands, the malevolent Red Wizard casts a dark necromantic spell, raising yet another zombie soldier for his ever-growing army. Each resurrection brings him closer to his goal of conquering Mononia, even dreaming of adding the Golden One to his ranks. In the village of Angloria, Grimlock has spent weeks transforming the villagers into a disciplined militia capable of storming the Red Wizard's castle. Announcing that they'll ride at dawn, he assures them he won't abandon those who refuse to give up. Yet doubt remains. Some villagers question if they can truly trust Grimlock, considering his past abandonments of Arco and her father, Arnak. Grimlock explains that his hatred of the Red Wizard burns too brightly, so long as his new allies refuse to surrender in the coming fight, he won't give up on them. While Grimlock rallies his troops, Arco builds herself wooden armor from a fallen woodbot, bitterly reflecting on her strained relationship with Grimlock, her father, and even the anti-sun deity she once revered. She recalls a battle at sea where her father sailed away, 
instead of helping others fight the Golden One's dragon form. As Arco confronts one of the Golden One's Cyclop minions and draws her sword, she muses that her only regret is not realizing this truth sooner. Meanwhile, the Golden One has kept himself busy by launching another attack on Arco's home village of Valorith in the name of his deity, Soltron, unaware that his servant Clada has been watching the rampage from afar. When the Golden One returns, Clada innocently asks about his master's latest hunt. The Golden One gloats that if Arnak and his followers continue to beg Grimlock for help, then they will burn to appease the face of Soltron. By nightfall, Grimlock and his militia reach the Red Wizard's crumbling castle. Suddenly, hidden woodbots spring to life, attacking the humans as Grimlock presses forward alone. He soon faces the Red Wizard's zombie horde. Despite their numbers, the undead are no match for Grimlock's dinosaur form, which tears through them with ease. Smashing through the castle doors, he confronts the Red Wizard, who futilely unleashes spells that can't penetrate Grimlock's armor. Stripping away the wizard's robe, Grimlock reveals that his enemy is actually a Quintesson in disguise. With the Quintesson mortally wounded after being cleaved apart by Grimlock's tail, the wizard explains that the blood of Soltron is the basis of all life in this strange world. As the wizard dies, he proclaims that he could have deposed the Golden One, and warns that Grimlock alone won't be enough to stop him. Having fled the destruction of their village, Arnak and a small group of Valorith villagers have followed Grimlock's army to the Rotlands and spy on the battle. Grimlock mulls over the Quintesson's words before he returns to the castle gates, hoisting the corpse of their fallen foe as a grisly victory trophy. Grimlock recognizes Arnak amidst the crowd. Although Arnak wants to know where his daughter is, Grimlock admits that he doesn't know. With the Golden One growing ever more erratic, Arnak tells the Dinobot that they need everyone on their side. This time, however, Grimlock pledges his support. If the Golden One derives his power from Energon, then it's his problem. With that, Grimlock agrees to join forces with the people of Valorith, and far away, the Golden One welcomes an unexpected visitor to his citadel. Despite his warnings that Soltron won't forgive her transgressions, she snarls that forgiveness is for the weak. Arco has come here to learn about Minonia's true power. In his towering citadel, the Golden One readies Arco for battle. Although she is a formidable warrior and promising student, his motives for bringing her into his fold are not purely noble. Arco may be a loyal follower of both the Golden One and Soltron, but her past allegiance to the Anti-Sun requires atonement through sacrifice. As he reveals this, the malevolent wizard gestures to a glass crucible, swirling with the living essence of Soltron's lifeblood. Meanwhile, outside the Red Wizard's castle, Grimlock, his newly formed Anglorian militia, and the remaining villagers of Valorift assess their unexpected victory. From the corpse of the Quintesson, the Dinobot warrior takes a small sample of the planet's natural lifeblood, recognizing it as a type of Energon. He soon realizes it is unlike the miraculous fuel that powers Cybertron. It is alive, and attempts to consume him as a living amorphous mass. Grimlock destroys it with his flame breath, concluding that the Energon here is tainted, its very essence poisoned. As they make camp for the night, Grimlock lays out his plan to village elders Norea and Arnak. If Minonia's magic comes from Energon, then the Golden One has a vulnerability. Norea adds that while Valorif's people exhausted their magic to summon Grimlock, Angloria has enough reserves to cast a spell of their own. This pleases Grimlock. His plan requires something only they can do. As the dusk settles in, Grimlock approaches the Golden One's citadel, sword in hand. The Golden One and his minions watch him approach, confident in their superiority. The wizard thanks Arco for predicting Grimlock's arrival. She sneers that his newfound compassion for the people of Minonia has dulled his once ruthless edge. At the castle gates, the Golden One's servant Clada awaits him, flanked by a monstrous army. But Grimlock has no intention of negotiating. He is there to overthrow the Golden One and free Minonia. Even the revelation that Arco has betrayed him does not shake Grimlock's resolve. Nor does the army of orcs, ogres, cyclops, and gargoyles. Though outnumbered, Cybertronian steel holds firm against magical foes. As the battle rages on, Grimlock fights fiercely, buying enough time for his allies to cast a spell that triggers a solar eclipse, weakening the Golden One's magic. The wizard, taken aback, unleashes his most powerful spell, 
transforming himself into a colossal golden dragon. In moments, the dragon seizes Grimlock, dragging him into the sky, but Grimlock transforms into his dinosaur form and bites back. The Golden One loses control, crashing into his own castle and reverting to his true form. He conjures a blast, but it bounces off Grimlock's metal armor. Grimlock grabs the wizard by the throat, declaring that the planet's tainted Energon revealed the truth. Mononia's Energon is linked to Soltron, and consuming it has turned the ruler into an avatar of the malevolent god. Grimlock urges the Golden One to join him against the true threat, but the wizard warns that no one can face Soltron and live. As Grimlock releases him, two voices struggle for control of the wizard's body. One dark voice claims it has ruled Mononia since before the Transformers arrived, while the terrified Golden One admits he was merely Soltron's puppet. The battle for control is brief. Soltron, crackling with arcane power, seizes his mortal vessel and taunts Grimlock for abandoning his warrior nature to protect those too weak to fight for themselves. Defiant, Grimlock vows to fight to his last breath. In a final moment of clarity, the true Golden One agrees, recalling his oath to die for his people. Now is the time to fulfill it. A magical explosion forces Soltron from his host, restoring him to his true form. As the Golden One thanks Grimlock for freeing him, he passes away. From the tallest tower, Arco watches confused and furious at the sight of the Golden One thanking Grimlock. Consumed by her anger, she doesn't notice Soltron speaking to her, promising all the power she desires in exchange for banishing her fears. Desperate to silence her doubts, she accepts his offer. As Grimlock watches in horror, Arco is clad in magical armor, rising as Soltron's new avatar. The Golden One has fallen, but Soltron, his master, won't go down easily. As Grimlock battles Arco, the newest avatar of the evil sun god, Arnak and Nerea fight to maintain the magical eclipse that weakens Soltron's solar powers. Even at the cost of all their magical energon, despite their efforts, a weakened deity is still a formidable foe, and Grimlock struggles under Soltron's relentless attacks. Soltron takes a moment to gloat, revealing that Arco willingly allowed him in, and now his control over her is absolute. Grimlock snarls back, calling Soltron a parasite who destroys his hosts before moving on. But as long as Grimlock's spark still burns, he won't let Soltron do the same to Arco, even if it means harming her to hurt Soltron. As he speaks, Soltron sneers and sends Grimlock flying with a single punch, mocking the once ruthless Dinobot for going soft. Even when Grimlock fires back with blaster shots, Soltron mocks him for holding back, but Grimlock has a different plan. Dropping his blaster, he invites Soltron to leave Arco and take him as his new host, offering Soltron the chance to see the universe on one condition. He can never return to Mononia. Amused by the idea of Grimlock sacrificing himself for one girl and eager to expand his reign beyond Mononia, Soltron accepts. Soltron releases his hold on Arco and sends a beam of golden energy into Grimlock, transferring his essence into Grimlock's body. But as Soltron arrives in this new realm, he quickly realizes he's been deceived. He finds himself in a strange place and demands Grimlock show himself. A bolt of lightning heralds the arrival of the Dinobot leader, who reveals that this is no trick. Grimlock promised Soltron a universe, but he never said which one. This metaphysical plane is Grimlock's own spark, his personal universe, where he rules supreme. Round two begins as they battle for control of Grimlock's body. Disgusted by Soltron's appropriation of the Autobot insignia, Grimlock vows that Soltron will not use his face to oppress Mononia, but Soltron laughs, declaring that his new body will oppress Mononia for generations. Despite the burning pain of Soltron's magical assault, Grimlock growls that he tricked Soltron into surrendering his greatest power. Outside, Soltron is a god, but in here, there's only room for one ruler, Grimlock. In a decisive move, Grimlock rips Soltron's essence from his body, shattering his avatar and leaving nothing but a burning skeleton. As golden light envelops Soltron's skull, the dying god curses Grimlock, claiming that he hasn't saved Mononia. He's only prolonged its suffering. In the real world, Grimlock awakens to a small but familiar hand tapping his visor. 
Arco's hand. She asks if he's still alive. As Grimlock's systems come back online, he groans that Soltron is finally dead. As the eclipse ends and sunlight once again bathes Mononia, Grimlock declares that today is a good day. When Arco asks why Grimlock returned after everything that happened, Grimlock admits that he misunderstood the true meaning of strength. It's not about fighting someone's battle for them, but standing beside them in their fight. Without Arnak and Naria's help, Grimlock could never have defeated Soltron. Seeing her father's weakened body from overexertion, Arco rushes to his side. Although Naria explains that the spell strain has taken years off of Arnak's life, he says he would gladly do it again to save his daughter. However, their victory comes at a cost. With Soltron's death, the magical energon that sustained him has lost its power. Without it, Grimlock has no way to return home. Arnak suggests Grimlock could stay and lead Valorift in his place, but Grimlock declines, knowing that Mononia belongs to its people. If they need a new leader, they have one already, Arco. Though she doubts herself, Grimlock reminds her that her warrior spirit will help her regain the trust she lost and forge a better future. Arco nervously smiles and asks if she'll be accepted. Sometime later, the citizens of Valorift find a way to create a temporary magical bridge back to Cybertron using a sample of Grimlock's Energon. There's just enough magic for one trip. As Grimlock says his goodbyes and steps into the portal, a familiar set of mechanical arms pull him back to Cybertron. After yanking Grimlock out of the magical rift, Optimus Prime is puzzled. From his perspective, Grimlock was only gone for a few seconds but looks much worse for wear. Grimlock briefly recounts his adventure in Mononia, and Optimus quickly understands. He's surprised, however, when Grimlock shares what he's learned. Strength can go hand in hand with mercy. Surrounded by the Dinobots, Optimus Prime welcomes Grimlock home. A warrior, rebel, defender, avenger, and above all else, a king. Transformers King Grimlock was a great read and I thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this series. Don't forget to like this video and sub to the channel for more and I'll see you guys next time.